All right, so why don't you, uh, first off, like, explain what the, XA, the Experience API score and profile is. Um, all right, well, in a nutshell, it's a, it's a, I guess, a guideline for how to generate XAPI stuff um, that maps to the SCORM stuff you used to map or record. So you had a SCORM course, SCORM course recorded things like your progress, your score, your success. And um, that was already defined in the SCORM data model. Um, and when we first started talking to people in like, our um, you know, DOD community that had already adopted SCORM and started talking to them about the Experience API, they're like, that's great, but um, we've spent a lot of time and money and resources into the SCORM thing, and now you're coming up with XAPI. Uh, we can't just turn off SCORM, turn on XAPI and go. And also, um, we don't even know, like, we can't even just merge in and dip our toes in the water because we don't know how to, uh, you know, keep our data consistent between SCORM and XAPI. So it was kind of a, an effort to try to bridge the gap, um, understanding that a lot of people are in the SCORM environment, have a lot of data there, have a lot of content there, um, have a lot of knowledge and resources invested in SCORM, um, and they want to use Experience API even just a little bit, but aren't sure how to do that and maintain the interoperability that was kind of there in SCORE. So this profile um, was an effort to try to you know, map all of that information and give you a way to store data, um, both SCORM data and outside of SCORM data, but in the SCORM kind of model, um, so that you could still track stuff and your LMS may be able to understand it or your content may be able to report it uh, easily and consistently. Um, so that's kind of what it, it, it is intended to do. It's for those who um, really are from the SCORM environment um, and want to uh, work with the experience at API but can't just turn off the SCORM valve and turn on the XAPI valve and can't continue running. Um, so well, we started creating this profile with the idea of, okay, first, um, let's say you just want to duplicate the information. Um, uh, like, not just, I got a score, but I got a score and then some other stuff. So you want to keep, like, the score and stuff, um, but externalize it so maybe other reports could access that data instead of having to go through your LMS in that closed system when you don't know exactly how to get that data out but also um, include other stuff that SCORM just doesn't track. Um, maybe the, the um, I, I can't think off the top of my head um, some examples, but maybe how many times you changed from one answer to another, or um, what was your um, score progression um, through attempts in the test. Maybe you tried the test six times. Can you look at that attempt history um, right. and compare it to see if you've improved or not? Where currently in SCORM, you're only going to get the last, um, your last score, for example. Correct, yes. So the idea was, um, how can you do the SCORM-like stuff in a consistent manner so that you could build third-party tools and pull that data out? And then uh, how do you, within that model, that SCORM model, um, report this extra stuff in a way that you could also re uh, pull that, or, you know, query that data later on and make sense out of it. Um, so started going through all the things, and there's things like uh, if you know anything about SCORM, um, you know that you know content is launched by the LMS, and there's a, an idea of a session or you know a temporal model, the time in which the, the learner interacts with a page, um, and so we had to kind of replicate that or duplicate that in a way so I could say, okay, during this um, learner's attempt on this page, what kind of interactions happen? And if you're thinking about the LRS side, LRS doesn't really care. It's just a stream of data. So how can you bundle that up and kind of group that all together and even identify when a session has started and when a session has ended? So these are the, the kind of issues that I had to address. Um, so this is the document. It's uh, the profile is written to address all this stuff. It was put on GitHub. 
Um, it's publicly available, open, anybody can use it, uh, all that stuff. Um, you can also, which I'll say again at the end, but um, it's in a, a draft form right now, uh, basically awaiting more reviews and I guess vetting. Um, but you can, anybody can submit an issue. Uh, it's using GitHub's issue uh, tracker, so you just can click this link and uh, then submit your question or issue, and I'll um, try to address them. But um, I broke it down into like, you know, uh, certain, I guess, main pieces, things like uh, if somebody doesn't understand what a profile is or what we're trying to do between SCORM and Experience API, kind of break down what it is, um, how to use it, uh, so like um, how do you translate the, the SCORM stuff to Experience API, and then kind of a general feel of what Experience API statements look like, so people aren't, some people don't have to go and read the entire XAPI spec just to come back here and read this information. Um, and then I talk about like, uh, I tried to come up with common denominators on how to launch things without really saying this is exactly how to do launch. Because some systems may use like LTI, others like um, CMI5 already describe how to do launch. So I didn't want to say you must use one or the other. Um, so I kind of tried to figure out like what things are necessary to make this type of profile um, usable, and then anything extra could be added on. It doesn't really hurt anything, um, and it gives you the ability to choose the launch mechanism that works for you. Hmm. It, for for those of you who are who are wondering or who know what CMI five is and are wondering how that factors in, uh, that's part of a discussion that we'll be hopefully having at the XAPI boot camp, and I know will be discussed. I believe at the upcoming XAPI camp in uh, Orlando, the end of this month. I I think. Uh, so, sorry, I just want to cut in and mention that. Oh, no problem. Um, so, I, I basically kind of broke down, like, how you can do launch. Um, it also depends on, like, what your role of, like, this profile had to look at, uh, at um, kind of the, the role of SCORM in your environment. Like, if you were heavily invested in SCORM and you're just taking one small step towards Experience API, you're not going to worry about launch because your content's still going to be launched by your LMS. Mostly what you're going to be doing is sending some statements out to an LRS so that you can do your querying and do some like smart um, uh, analytics around other data that SCORM doesn't provide. So it's kind of like a small addition. But if you're to the point where uh, your LMS exists but you have content like, uh, you know, um, mobile content or simulators or things that happen outside of a browser or outside of the LMS. You want to be able to track that in a way similar to your SCORM content so that you could uh, use the same reports to collect SCORM content and um, non-SCORM content and be able to uh, you know, analyze or compare or, or evaluate that information. Um, you, you have to think about things like how do you launch this if it's no longer in an LMS and um, how does the temporal model right. work if there is even a temporal model um, and, and things like that. So I had to look at both sides and try to create one um, you know, set of rules or guidelines that could help both, both parties. It's interesting. That, that, that sounds like it's abutting um, one of the other sort of um, four pillars of the training learning architecture or one of the problems, which would be the problem of launch. Is that correct? Um, Sure. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take that as a yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> this actually starts blending into a lot of what uh, the training and learning architecture talks about, things like uh, learner profiles. Like sometimes uh, like there's information that's within an LMS that you don't have if you're not actually accessing the LMS. So then how do you still provide that stuff that content used to have? Um, when you no longer can rely on the LMS as your you know, vendor of all information. Um, so you have that. Uh, you have things like uh, you can stretch it and start looking at like competencies and how those things tie together. And then, of course, you got the whole question. Uh, another one that often pops up with uh, the training and learning architecture is content brokering. Um, so 
not just the small portion of the launch, but also things like how do I even find content? How do I know that content's right for me? Hmm. Um, and then how do I know I have the license to allow it? So uh, I, this doesn't address all that stuff. But right. uh, as you start looking at this, you can see how those kind of impacts um, become more apparent or prevalent um, when you're well, when you start stretching outside of the LMS and the score and environment that um, a lot of people were in for a very long time. Mm. Anyway, so then, like I said, I talk about the SCORM temporal model, give you a general idea of um, how you announce that you know, some activity has started and how some activity has stopped. Um, and if you, uh, you know, close the page and come back later, are you resuming or are or have you exited and started a, a new attempt and how you can announce that and how that will impact how your reports well, not really how your reports are are done but um, it, it impacts like where statements are contained or what they're part of um, right did you read this time or was it last attempt um, so things like that and then um, I get really deep into the weeds with like Everything in SCORM, all the data model elements, if somebody wanted to report that to an LRS, um, how do you do that? Some of the things are straightforward. They're just statements, um, and you use a verb. Uh, it's pretty easy. There's other things, like some of the stuff that was provided by the LMS before, how do you do that? Because you don't want the LMS sending statements saying, like, uh, your learner name is Tom. It just doesn't make sense to, that that is a... Um, learner or an experience API statement. So then how do you provide that information if you don't have access to the LMS? Um, so that's what this does is goes through that, defines um, an expected format for statements and data, which then on the other side somebody could, some other party could actually create reports for you while you're creating the content and uh, they can follow these instructions and um, you know, successfully interoperate with your content. Um, and then uh, I, that's what most of this is. Then it has a little bit about some of the, some of the weird spots, like how do you actually figure out what the status is? What is the final status of that, that page? Um, what happens if I have two um, conflicting statements? Which one takes precedence? Things like that. Right. And then finally, a whole bunch of examples. So, so um, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, you know, Tom, one of the things I, and I want to kind of point this out for people listening, um, one of the things that uh, was made apparent to me when you started reveal, you and John started revealing this, uh, is that a lot of instructional designers and people who work in e-learning and, and learning technology um, understand SCORM to a certain point, certainly not as well as you do, um, but enough to be able to affect the solutions that they want to do. One of the really, and then of course the XAPI is in many ways kind of blowing all of that up in terms of opening the doors wide open and allowing them to do things that they couldn't do before. The thing I love about the uh, the SCORM profile for XAPI is that it's the meeting of those two things. You know, kind of, you can still do the things that you wanted to do before, but it also shows sort of the, not just limitations of SCORM, but also makes you focus on like okay if you're if you are trying to reproduce swarm like things like how exactly is that supposed to work you know if you're recreating it so it, it, in a way I, I feel like I've learned a lot more about swarm itself as a result of reading the uh, reading the document I, I know whenever I made it I learned a lot about what really I don't maybe I'm wrong I could be totally off base but what really matters whenever you report stuff because um super easy to send a statement. It's super easy to make up any of the stuff that you want and, you know, encode the data that you want somehow in Experience API. It's just flexible enough to do whatever the heck you want. Right. The problem is, on the flip side, um, there is a limited uh, query mechanism um, in Experience API, in like an LRS. There's a few, th a few ways that you can ask for data back but um, if you don't set up the data right in the first place, you're not going to be able to use those filters and queries to get a manageable set back. You're going to just get too much information and be doing way too much work on the client instead of off at the server. So um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do I 
How do I group statements? How do I categorize statements? How do I describe what these things are in a way that I can get that information back in a small subset that matters to me instead of, you know, get me everything in the L or S and then I'll filter it on my side. That's, that's a little crazy. Um, but real quickly, we do have an example. Um, so for ITSEC, um, IITSEC 2014, and I guess beginning of December in Orlando, um, we had a small plug fest there, and we demonstrated the uh, profile, the storm profile at that moment, um, using the examples you find in this TLA roadmap examples, it's like 2014. Um, there is a, an original SCORM course that we modified with a wrapper that Jono made that will also send out experience API statements whenever you, um, basically whenever your content makes any SCORM calls. So if you set a score, it'll go and send that statement also out to the LRS as well as sending it to your LMS. Um, we also created an Android, um, it's like a job aid is what we call it. Uh, basically what it is is um, similar content to the course, but more condensed um, and just kind of trying to help you remember the things that you learned in the course. So I learned a whole bunch about colors of roses in the course. Um, I'm out in the field and I need to figure out what color this is and for whatever reason I can't figure that out without looking at um, uh, the Android job aid. But the Android job aid gives me information about like what type of roses are these colors, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so what you can start to do with the, the charts, that's the final piece of the example, is you can start to compare how often people used or needed the job aid support Android application. Um, based on their performance in the course. So you can start looking at the performance and the activities that they've done within the course, and then look at the, the actual things that they access in the Android um, uh, job aid, and begin to look at maybe is my content not effective enough? Um, did I have the ability to skip sections and they skipped and now I realize that they are um, missing information that they should have had and now they have to keep looking it up in the Android job aid. Um, so you can maybe start to look at these things and decide whether uh, uh, things are, you know, uh, your content is effective or are people using your job aid correctly, things like that. Would so, um, and that all uses the, the profile. So the profile in its current state is usable and um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Hopefully um, that was somewhat helpful. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I believe so. I'm actually, I, I wanted to thank you, John, for taking time to, uh, to explain this. I've been meaning to do that for a couple of weeks now.